In this video I'm gonna give you 10 quick tips for Northern Lights photography. So I live in Stockholm and uh, it's quite unusual to see Northern Lights around here, especially above the city. But the other day we got a chance to do so, uh, me and a few friends, we uh, actually managed to photograph the Northern Lights as well. And in this video I've compiled my 10 best tips if you wanna try photographing Northern Lights. Number one, location and timing. So it's no secret that you should uh, preferably be quite far up north on the earth if you want to experience northern lights. But as you can see on this map, I mean it does happen that you can see them as far south as Germany in some cases, but it's very very unusual. And uh, where I live in Stockholm on the green line, it happens like a few times per winter, but not that often. Uh, but you should download some kind of app to see when it is uh, a good idea to go out and photograph the Northern Lights. And when you go out, you should try to find a point that is quite far up. Uh, in this case, we went to a mountain in Stockholm where you have a good view over the city. And uh, if you have uh, a point where you stand on a mountain or something similar, you have a good view over the horizon and nothing is like in the way and that is a really good vantage point to view the northern lights. Number two, clothes. This one is really easy to overlook, but uh, rest assured that when it is minus one degrees at the, as it was the other day, it feels like minus 10 because you're standing completely still, often for hours before you get to see the northern lights. So get shoes that are really, really thick and warm and get gloves as well because you're using your hands a lot when you're adjusting stuff on the camera. So get thin gloves for that and maybe thicker gloves to have on top of that. And dress in layers in general so that you keep warm while you're standing out there. Number three, what to bring. I would say that there are two things that are really essential. Uh, the rest is just like added bonuses. And number one is a good tripod. You will not get away with exposure times of less than one second, so get a good tripod. And uh, second, you need a wide angle lens. Uh, 35 millimeters or less, I would really recommend. You need to catch a lot of the sky and therefore you will need a wide angle lens. Number four, white balance. You need to set the white balance in a good way so that you can really see the greens. And uh, auto white balance is quite shitty when you're shooting in the dark because the camera has a really hard time guessing. So I would recommend setting it manually. Uh, begin with 5500 Kelvin and try that and then go even lower in case you feel you need to. You could of course adjust this later in Lightroom if you're shooting RAW, which you should be doing, but it is always nice to see if you catch the Northern Lights already on the scene and not when you get home. Number 5. Self Timer. If you don't have a remote control or don't want to carry one around, just set the self timer for 2 seconds and that is plenty for the tripod to stabilize so that you never get any shakes in your photo. Number 6. ISO. My rule of thumb here is to set the ISO as high as possible but not so high so that you get a lot of grain in your photo. And this of course is different for every camera, uh, in my case I usually set the ISO at like 800 or 1000. Number 7. Aperture. Set it as high as possible, which means a low f number. In my case I know that my lens is sharp even wide open, so I'm setting it wide open at f1.7. And I'm setting the focus on uh, infinity so that we get a sharp sky. And the reason we want to have a large aperture is so that we can get a low shutter speed. Because uh, if you have a shutter speed that is like several seconds, you get this really smeared out northern lights as in this photo that I took on Iceland a year ago. I mean, it still looks okay, but you cannot really see any contours or anything uh, of the northern light. Compare this uh, with the photo I took a few days ago here in Stockholm, and you can see I get a lot more contours when I have a faster shutter speed. In this case it is 1.3 seconds. So high ISO and large aperture means fast shutter speed, which I recommend. Number 9. Where to look? Well, the answer to that one is rather simple. Look to the north. That is where you will find the northern lights. Uh, 
and when you do look north and it is an evening where you're supposed to be seeing northern lights at one point or another often it begins with this just a very very faint green uh, like disc over the sky so look for this and wait just wait number 10 try a time lapse a time lapse is of course a sequence of photos that you take and later compile into a video I didn't really do a time lapse uh, a few days ago when I photographed the Northern Lights, but I kind of accidentally did one because I took a few shots in sequence. Rostam here did a really really beautiful time lapse and uh, I got very inspired by his one. Check it out on his YouTube channel that I'm linking right here in the corner. And besides doing a time lapse, which is great fun, uh, take the opportunity to uh, take some other photos as well on the scene. Uh, I did this when I was waiting for the Northern Lights, as you often do for like one or two or more hours. Uh, you often have uh, a lot of really nice uh, landscape shots around you, even if the Northern Lights aren't there. So take the opportunity to take a few other shots. That's it for this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. It will help me advance on the YouTubes. And please of course subscribe if you like this video. I'm trying to post at least one video every week with photography tips. And as always, you will find products links in the description to all the stuff I mentioned in this video. And if you want to, please follow me on Instagram or 500px. My username there is MWRoll. See you soon again.